I'd like to discuss with you second derivatives with the polar thing. So, uh, and that's actually why I did the second solution, because this knowledge we have just discovered, when, when the knowledge of this inverse der derivatives of the inverse functions, uh, the derivatives of the inverse polar map, so this map, which still we don't have the direct formula for, but we do know the derivatives of this inverse polar map. Here they are. All of them I discovered on this slide. I'm going to use them to find the second x and y derivatives in terms of second r and theta derivatives. Okay? And that's a tricky question. I mean, it's, it requires significant discipline when you exercise the chain rule, even if you know all of, I mean, yeah, if you, even if you know all of what we discovered. It requires significant discipline when you apply the chain rule. Uh, and what was the other thing? Never mind the other thing. Let's just look at this, this example. Yeah. That's the last example for today. So the same setting you see, we have a function. We have polar we have polar substitution. And now I need my second derivatives. F double X, F double Y, F mixed one. As a matter of fact, I only do double uh, the F double X and F double Y. I didn't do the mixed one. In terms of the second order, second order polar derivatives. And this time we follow, we follow the second approach because now we have all of these uh, these auxiliary derivatives of the inverse polar map. It will be relatively easy to. I mean, as, soon, as long as you just are careful with the with the with the way you apply the chain rule. It will be relatively easy to, to see what, to find the result. And the result itself, actually, it's interesting. I'm, I'll discuss the result itself later. So we'll just do first, uh, we'll just do the computations first. So that's what I said on my slide, computed earlier. And I opened what we computed earlier on my slide before. We computed with you that x and y derivative, they are related to, to r and theta derivatives via these two formulae. That's what we discovered on slide before. We also discovered with you these derivatives of the inverse polar maps. Here they are. That's the information from the slide before. Four inverse polar maps we discovered. And that's a good thing to keep in mind. Lots of questions involve polar maps and inverse polar maps. So knowing these derivatives, it's a piece of a theory, as a matter of fact. That's the things which we have on the slide before. You see, I just made an effort and I expressed my inverse polar deriv der derivatives using x and y rather than theta and cos and sine, which makes it a bit shorter sometimes. Yeah. So f double x, this one, if I do f double x, I need to differentiate this by x once again. And if I do that, it will be product rule applied twice, right? Here it is. If I do double x, I do product rule, and I do chain rule at the same time, right? So these two terms, these two terms, this is the product rule applied here. I'm sorry, I said the chain rule. Chain rule hasn't been applied yet. I did product rule here, so x. That's right. First, I differentiate the first factor by x, right in here, and then I differentiate second factor by x, right in here. Let me just, can I zoom in a little bit? Too much, probably. Yeah, like this. Right. Now, this x derivative, this x derivative, I can use the same line for this x derivative. That's the time for the chain rule. So when I compute this x derivative, look what I say. Our x. When I do Rx, this is double R and then R by X, and then R theta and then theta by X. That's a chain rule. When I do this theta X right here, when I do this theta X, it's another chain rule. Look at this. It's theta by R, second derivative by R, and then R by X, and then theta by theta and theta by X.
I'm going to sub this. I'm going to I'm going to sub this expression right in here, and I'm going to sub this expression right in here. But before I do that, I need to make an effort and find this second second derivatives of the inverse polar maps. How do I do that? I take this and differentiate extra by x. If I take this and differentiate extra by x, so differentiate this piece by x, look what happens. R double x. This is a quotient rule. Or as a matter of fact, I like I like product rule more than the quotient rule. So it's a first, it's a it's a this expression, it's a derivative of the first factor, which is x, it's one, by the second factor, one on r, and then x times the derivative of the second factor, one on r, which is negative one on r square, and then chain rule brings in another r of x factor. If for r of x I use this expression again, that's how it is. The second x x derivative of the inverse polar map. This time it's easier, it's just the straightforward computation with the help of this. But that's how it is. Uh, theta double x, the same computation. I use this one and differentiate by x again. Y is a constant. We ignore that. This is 1 on r squared. It's a power function. So that's why it's 1 on r cube. Number 2 came up. And this is a chain rule. That's why r of x is present here as a factor. You have to analyze this carefully, all of this. It's, it's hard to pick it up maybe in just in one lecture just in class. So you have to take yourself through these computations once again in the, uh, with no time pressure uh, and everything. So that's what we, now, now we have everything for this one to do this expansion. And I do this expansion. And just a direct substitution. So I sub in here, the right hand side from here, Rx squared. That's, the, that's, that's, all, that's all there is here. Uh, we can do a bit of a simpli simplification. We can combine. Look at this. F double R here. F double theta here. This F double theta. Um, the mixed one, R theta and theta R, we can just assume that they are identical. That's the Clorio theorem. That's why I double of this. And then the F R and the theta, I put them at the back. Like this. That is the expression for the F double X. This is the expression for F double X. Now we have to make the similar effort for F double Y. I know it's, a, it's a close to 6 o'clock. We have four minutes left, but I hope you can survive. And now, I'll, well, now from the, because we already had some experience with F double X, we can do some little shortcuts. And like I said, if you are in a position to do something like this, it's a straightforward computation. But it requires discipline when you apply the chain rule. And it requires creativity when you design what you write and how you write this, how you group things, how you, what, what sort of steps you do. It's, it's, it's a skill to put the right formulae on the paper and skip the right formulae in order to deliver the message to the person who reads what you wrote. So let's just try F double Y. So F double Y comes from here. Mm. So it's a product rule in this term and the product rule in this term. For this and for and for this, I need to use the chain rule once more. So I need to write up this four formulae, this four auxiliary preparation preparation formula before I can replace this factor, this r double y, this factor, and this theta double y. I have this, and they they go in in line with this with this four. Yeah, they go in line with this four. That's a chain rule applied to when I compute this piece. Second by r, r by y, second by theta, theta by y. That's a chain rule when you compute this, when I compute this piece. Theta by r, theta by theta, and the factors. And then I need double y and double double y from R, which comes from here, I apply y derivative right from this for this quotient. It's a quotient rule. Here it is. 
well, quotient and the chain, and I apply double y to theta here, to theta y. Yeah. Now we're fully set, even though that this time I will skip this long expansion stage, I can jump, jump to something like this straight away, because we can see through all we need. Like FRR will come up when you multiply this by extra RY, is a term for R, uh, F double R. F double theta, as in here, will come up when you multiply this term by extra theta y. That's the second term you see. I just jumping over a step, but because we, we had some experience here, we can make this shortcut. Uh, mixed derivatives, they come up. One of them come from here. One of them come from here. And every time it's, uh, it's, it's this fact. That's why it's double R y and theta y, and then goes the first order derivatives at the back. And that's the expression for f double y. All right, one minute left, and we, we're almost done. So when I go for sum, f double x and f double y, and that's the canonical notation for this sum. Some, sometimes it's called, a Lap well, in some books, the official, uh, the official name for this symbol is the Laplacian. Next time we're going to discuss this a little bit more. If I do the sum, look what happens. This f double r with this f double r, it delivers x square, sorry, rx square and ry square. If you look back at the expressions, it's a cos theta plus sine theta. It's just one. That's why f r r becomes just f r r r with this, with no any, uh, with no any other factor. Uh, f double theta here and f double theta here, they come with a theta x square and theta y square. If you look back here, we have to add up these two factors, right? Squaring them before we add them up. It will be y square plus x square, which is r square. It will be r4 at the bottom, so altogether it's r square, like this. Mixed terms, they cancel each other. This mixed term cancels this mixed term. Mixed term. Look, our x theta x, product of these two, is negative of product of these two. They cancel each other. F r, it's r double y, which is which is where's my r double y? I'm sorry, actually I have to combine two. Uh, F r is this piece and this piece and the coefficients next to it, next to it, r double x and r double y, from here. And, when my, and from here, if you combine these two together again, y squared plus x squared is r squared. On this r cube, it's just 1 on r. And this 1 on r and this 1 on r is double 1 on r. So altogether, it's 1 on r. And f theta also cancels each other. If you just see f theta double y and theta double x, they're just one negative of the other. So the expression for this combination in polar coordinates takes this a little bit longer, but still simple, simple form. 